The NASCAR Xfinity Series race has a vision included from National Super Speedway, and we see a wild and chaotic race with a lot of wrecks, a lot of chaos, and Age Allmendinger picking up the victory. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to your video. I just got done watching NASCAR Xfinity Series race from National Super Speedway, the Tennessee Lottery 250. We have quite a bit to talk about from this race. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So, before the green flag drop in today's race, Zane Smith and Connor Mosek would have to go to the rear for an approved adjustments, and Joey Gates would have to go to the rear for a driver change. So at the start of the race, said Cole Custer lead the field from the inside with Chandler Smith on the outside, and Cole Custer got a pretty good lead. But going to turn number one, we saw the first wreck in turn number one where Kyle Seagull was sent three wide in the corner. Kyle Seagull gets loose and collects Jeb Burton, Ryan C., Justin Allgaier, and Stephen Parsons. Apparently, Kyle Seagull was not happy with Jeb Burton after the incident. It just looked like Kyle Seagull got loose. Allmendinger tried to make it to the inside. Was a little aggressive early in the race. Unfortunately, because of that, he got damaged and spun out, and this unfortunately took Stephen Parsons out of the race as well. So then on the next race, started Cole Custer lead the field from the inside with Chandler Smith on the outside, and Cole Custer was able to hold on to the race lead. As they went into turn number three, Austin Hill got, was battling for fourth position in turn number three and got loose under Ty Gibbs. Unfortunately, would collect Jeb Burton and Ryan C going into turn number four, bringing out the caution and backing the outside wall really hard and got some damage. Unfortunate for uh, Cole Cut, um, Austin Hill had a really strong car beginning, but unfortunately, kind of blamed Ty Gibbs for that one. I think it was his fault because he was on the bottom of the track. So then we go back racing on lap 15 with Cole Custer leading the field from the, from the inside with Sammy Smith on the outside and Cole Custer was able to hold on to the lead with Ty Gibbs getting out to second. Cole Custer had the race lead and then a few laps later another caution would come out for Chad Chastain and Ryan Ells who were battling for 20 position with spin out both getting to the outside wall bringing out the caution once again. And went back racing once again with Cole Custer leading the field from the inside with Ty Gibbs on the outside. And Ty Gibbs got a really, really strong restart and was able to clear for the race lead. Ty Gibbs really was able to pull away to a pretty mass lead, almost two seconds, and would come off the corner and win stage number one. Then only left cars to come down. Pirov Austin will win the race off Pirov by taking field only. He was on older scuffed tires. Ty Gibbs came off second. Unfortunately, John Hunter Nemechek got a penalty for too many men over the wall. So then on the next race, sorry, Austin will lead the field from the inside with old tires with Ty Gibbs on the outside. And basically, we saw Austin will get a really, really bad restart. Went up the track, drifted up the track into Ty Gibbs. He goes up in the outside wall and crashes out of the race. Unfortunately, collects AJ Allmendinger and Carson Osmar, some of the strongest cars in this race. Do not understand why you're staying out in scuffed tires. It's a bad call by the team, in my opinion. They should have put on some tires. Being out on 30 tires, lap tires, was completely stupid and took out some really competitive cars because then AJ Allmendinger would get some damage in that. So then on the next race, sorry, Cole Custer lead the field from the outside with Sam Mayer on the inside. And Chandler Smith got a really strong restart, but Cole Custer was able to hold on for the race lead. Meanwhile, on the restart, Riley Hurts and Sammy Smith had some contact coming down the front stretch, but luckily they were able to save it. But the next lap, another caution would come out for Connor Mosek, who seemed to have a flat tire and spun the outside wall really, really hard and back on the back stretch bringing the caution out. So then on the next restart, Cole Custer lead the field from the outside with Sam Mayer on the inside. Sam Mayer got a really, really strong restart, but it was able to unfortunately lose the lead between Chandler Smith and Cole Custer. Chandler Smith eventually was able to get to the race lead. Then a few laps later, another caution would come out for Sammy Smith, who spun from fifth position in turn number two after Sheldon Creed hit the bottom of the track, hit the apron and clipped it and went back in the outside wall and unfortunately collected Sammy Smith and Brandon Jones had nowhere to go, bringing the caution out. Sheldon Creed just clipped that apron like other drivers had done and sadly made a major mistake, bringing the caution out. And then we went back green once again on lap 76 with Chandler Smith leading the field from the inside with Sam Mayer on the outside. And Chandler Smith was able to get a really, really strong run and was able to clear for the race lead. Some really good racing's happened by Chandler Smith for those last 10 or 15 laps of the stage, but nothing would affect Chandler Smith as he would come off the corner and win stage number two. Then only lap cars would come down pit road with Chandler Smith winning the race off pit road. Sam Mayer came in in fourth but lost a ton of positions as he got held up on pit road and dropped to 12. And unfortunately, Riley Hurts would get a tire violation penalty and would have to drop to the rear of the field. So then on the next restart, Chandler Smith lead the field from the inside with Cole Custer on the outside. And Chandler Smith got a really, really strong restart and was able to clear for the race lead. But then a few laps later, six laps later, Park Ligerman radioed into the crew that he was starting to have a loose wheel and it would have to come down pit road. And Cass Grawl had nowhere to go getting it back at Park Ligerman. And Park Ligerman spun out, bringing the caution out. 
That's just a mistake, unfortunately, on Park Clareman and Kaz Girl. I can't really blame one driver because Parker should have rated a little sooner. Kaz really had nowhere to go, and I can't completely blame Kaz Girl for the situation here. But that will bring the caution out once again. So then went back racing a lap 110. Chandler Smith leading the field from the inside with Cole Custer on the outside. And Chandler Smith was able to get a really strong restart and hold the race lead. But then next lap, Daniel Hemrick, he got a really, really strong run. Was up front a lot of this race. And he was able to get the race lead from Chandler Smith. But then a lap later, Chandler Smith was able to get the lead back. Meanwhile, John Remachek started radioing to the crew about 10 or 12 laps later. Basically, he had a vibration in the car and would come down for on lap 126 with that vibration. Meanwhile, there was a really, really good battle starting to happen up front between Cole Custer and Chandler Smith, who were a couple seconds ahead of the guy we'll talk about in a second. But they were battling really, really hard back and forth. Cole Custer clearly had a better car than Chandler Smith, especially in the long run. But Chandler Smith was definitely holding Cole Custer up, and he could not get around him. Meanwhile, as they're getting through live traffic and battling, AJ Allmendinger had a really, really insane run. Caught to the guys, it was he was two seconds back, and is eventually able to pass both Cole Custer and Chandler Smith for the race lead and started pulling away. Then we started having green flag pit stop. It was about 45 laps to go with Justin Allgaier coming on pit road first. Then Chandler Smith and Cole Custer, they both came in. Then a couple laps later, A.J. Allmendinger, Daniel Hammer came down to pit road. And Riley Hurst was also trying to come down pit road, but unfortunately missed. But then eventually a lap or two later, he would come down pit road with the rest of the leaders. Meanwhile, Sheldon Creed also got a speeding penalty. Sam Mayer sat out for a very, very long time, and he basically would pit for two tires to play a strategy game. Then Parker Ressop, he came down per row, giving Parker Klergerman the lead. So at this point, Parker Klergerman, he's trying to stretch it basically to the end of the race or trying to go as far as possible and keep the race lead. Also, you have Riley Hurst who's also driving back up to the front as well at this time. But eventually, with 12 laps to go, we see A.J. Allmendinger run down Parker Klergerman and was able to pass Parker Klergerman for the race lead. And it looks like that you're going to see A.J. Allmendinger pull out a massive lead and win. But then we can't get away without another caution. As with eight laps to go, Chad Chastain, actually six to go, Chad Chastain would spin off a turn over four, got loose, got sideways, and spun through the grass, bringing the caution out. Thank you, Chastain. So at this point, we see a lot of strategy for guys like Cole Custer, Parker Klegerman, Sam Mayer, John Nemechek, Justin Allgaier, Zane Smith will come down Piro, while the rest leaders, including A.J. Allmendinger, Chandler Smith, Austin Hill, Riley Hurst, and Josh Berry would all stay out. So then on the first overtime restart, A.J. Allmendinger lead the field from the inside with Chandler Smith on the outside, and we saw A.J. get a really strong restart. Meanwhile, Riley Herbst, he got a really strong restart in fourth position and moved to the outside, but Chandler Smith had a terrible restart and dropped pretty far back, and there was a three or four cars that kind of went into the corner too much together, and Chandler Smith had contact with Josh Berry going to turn number two, bringing the caution out. Just old tires could not get up to speed and struggle and then the race started. Just nothing they could do in that situation. It is just a shame that ended up happening. For Chandler, he had a really good day going. It's just a shame what would happen. So then, on the second and overtime restart, and the final restart of the day, you had A.J. Allmendinger lead the field from the inside, with Riley Hurts on the outside, and A.J. Allmendinger got a really, really strong restart, was able to clear Riley Hurts for the race lead. As they're coming down to the white flag, A.J. had a couple tenths of a second lead, Riley Hurts is trying to close back and up to A.J., but it would not be enough, and coming off the final corner, A.J. Allmendinger picks up his second win of the 2023 Xfinity Series season, and his 17th career cut Xfinity Series victory. Meanwhile, right behind him, there's a big wreck that was happening. Justin Allgaier, Brett Moffitt, Blaine Perkins, Park Clareman, and Anthony Alfredo would all crash coming to the checkered flag, meaning more cars got involved in wrecks. We hope everyone's okay in that wreck. Now, let's talk about the guy who won the race, AJ Allmendinger. Well deserved win, in my opinion. I know a lot of people say he kind of cheated his way. I know people don't like leeches being in the field, especially if AJ being a full time cup driver now. A lot of people are going to be frustrated that he was in the field, and a lot of people are going to look at that damage that he had and think he cheated. I don't think AJ cheated. He got damage from a wreck that really wasn't his fault, and sometimes you're going to have times where you're going to have somehow some unfortunate gifts end up happening. It happened, I think, to Chase Selly. I think it was in 2020 or 2021, where I think he got some damage, and he basically got benefited from that. So I can't really say that AJ cheated. I know people are going to say he did, but AJ's car really came into play, especially late in this race. Didn't have the strongest car early because never really a dominant car in this race. But once AJ got the lead, he pulled out to a pretty massive lead. Huge congratulations to AJ Allmendinger. Also had that Bailey Zimmerman sponsorship. Really good album, by the way. But nonetheless, congratulations to AJ Allmendinger on picking up the victory. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the race results, and I'll give you my score for today's race. 
So AJ Allmendinger picks up the victory. Riley Hurts finished the second. What could have been for Riley Hurts? Riley Hurts had a really, really strong car. That tire violation kind of cost him a shot at this win. And they say that missing pit road cost him a shot. But a great thing nonetheless for Riley Hurts with the new crew chief, Davin Receiver, who had been Eric Almarol's engineer. He's now the new crew chief, and it's really benefited Riley Hurts in a big way. His best run in a long time. Great day for Riley Hurts in second. Sam Mayer finishes third. Sam Mayer had a really, really good car today. Ran top five a lot of the day. Kind of fell back, tried to do a two-tire strategy. It kind of benefited him a little bit. It's a very solid top five finish in third. Austin Hill finishes fourth. Great recovery for Austin after the damage early in this race. A very solid comeback for him with the fourth place finish. Josh Berry finishes fifth. Saw a run for Josh Berry. Josh never had a car that was capable of winning. He probably had about a six, 10th place car at best. So a very solid day for Josh Berry. He'll be going full-time cup racing in 2024. John Hrimacek finished sixth. John Hunter was never factor in this race. That 20 car struggled a lot of the day. The tire violation, or vibration, I should say, cost him a shot at going for the win. Not a good day for John Hunter in sixth place. So it's still a solid day, but not a day that I think a lot of us expected. Zane Smith finishes seventh. Great day for Zane Smith. Obviously, RSS Racing 28 car basically had SHR equipment, but Zane had a very good day. Ran top 10 and top 5 a lot of day. Qualified very well. Had to start at the rear of the field at the beginning. And had a very, very strong day for Zane Smith. Obviously, a lot of talk about his future pass this year. A great day for Zane. Finished second yesterday in the truck race and comes home with another solid top 10 in the Xfinity Series. And his first Xfinity Series started 2023. A great day for Zane Smith. Daniel Hemrick finishes eighth. Hemrick had a better car than where he finished. I think he had a top five car most of the day. Just not a great finish at the end of the day for him, but still a solid day for him in eighth place. Cole Custer finished his ninth. Cole Custer was what kind of complaining, calling AJ Allmendinger a cheater after the race. Cole Custer car kind of just faded. It was about a second, third place car. He's probably going to finish second for that last yellow that came out. All the fresh tires passed it near the end. He had a really, really good car and still gets another top 10 nonetheless in ninth place, but probably had a shot at winning. Parker Retzlaff finishes 10th. Very solid day for Parker Retzlaff in 10th. Some strategy near the race end definitely helped him out a little bit, but he gets a very solid top 10 finish. Park Clergan was involved in that last lap wreck. He finishes 11th. They played a strategy call to come down pit road. Like I said, got involved in the last lap wreck. They finished 11th. Was probably about a 10th play, 15th place car. Had their issues, but still does get a top 15. Chandler Smith finished 12th. What could have been for Chandler Smith? One of the strongest cars. Probably had a top two or top three car most of the day, but unfortunately got involved in the wrecks. Finishes in 12th. Jeb Byrne finishes in 13th. Brett Moffitt finishes 14th. Saw runs for those guys. Justin Allgaier finishes 15th. Allgaier hit issues throughout the day as well. Ziz recovered a solid though to finish in 15th. Kaz Grawl finishes 16th. Sheldon Creative ended finishing lap down. Finishes 17th. Just been a rough year for him. Kyle Weatherman finished 18th. How about that for Kyle Weatherman? Basically, got benefit from a lot of cars wrecking out, but ran top 20 a lot of the day. I've said this about this guy. This guy deserves a full-time opportunity, so good to see him finish in the top 20 in 18th place. Ryan Seek finishes 19th. Brendan Poole, the very solid top 20 run in 20th place. Saw a run for him. Joe Graff Jr. finished 21st. Jeremy Clemens finished 22nd. Anthony Alfredo finished 23rd. Brandon Jones finished 24th. Just been not a good year for Brandon Jones. Unfortunately, this time it wasn't his fault. Just got caught up in someone else's mess. Really nothing you, you could do in that situation. Kyle Siegel had a really strong qualifying run, got involved in the early wreck on lap one. He never recovered, finished 25th. Blaine Perkins finished 26th. Jeffrey Earhart finished 27th. Ryan Ellis finished 28th. Chad Chastain finished 29th. David Starr finished his 30th. Joey Gase finished his 31st. Mason Massey finished 32nd. Had some sort of electrical issues, it sounds like. Josh Williams had field pump and field, no field pressure in the car. Basically went to the garage end of his day. He finished his 33rd. Sammy Smith, after getting involved in the wrecks, he finished his 34th. Connor Mosak, after wrecking himself, finished his 35th. Carson Osborne, after a really promising start to today, had a top five car. Probably had a car that could have been up front contending for the win today. He finished his 36th. And Ty Gibbs also finished 37. Ty Gibbs had probably the strongest car early in this race. But like I said, the Austin Hill mistake cost him a shot at the win. He finished 37th. And Seven Parsons finishes last in 38th place. So now let's talk about the overall race as a whole. And I'll give you my score for today's race. This race was one of the more chaotic races I have seen this year. It's up there with Atlanta. The benefit for this one is this is not the worst race of the year so far. There was actually good racing throughout. I thought it was very enjoyable once we didn't have a bunch of wrecks happening because the first half of this race, I'll be honest, was kind of unwatchable. Sure, there was good racing, but there was also a lot of wrecks and people just making mistakes. When you have a slick track like this, you have to race the track. You cannot race each other, especially going on the lap one. There were guys racing each other on these restarts and not using their heads and not using their brains. It felt like a truck race at times. But once everything got settled down and all the wrecks happened, 
we saw some really good racing, especially in stage number three. So for me, my score of the Xfinity race was probably going to be in the 9 to 10 if it had been played out like it did in stage three. I should probably have been 8 or 9. But because of how the race kind of played out throughout, i got to give this race, sadly, overall a 7 out of 10. Like I said, the score would have been a little bit higher for me if not for the beginning of the race. But overall, I thought it was a decent race overall. It was it got salvaged by the end, and we saw a pretty decent race overall at National Super Speedway. So, that is going to today's NASCAR Xfinity Series race review from National Super Speedway. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel. The locations are so notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support me on Patreon as well. Let's go below with that and combo your thoughts below on today's race. What are your thoughts on today's race? Let me know below. Let me know your score in the comments below. And congratulate AJ Allmendinger on picking up the victory. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. There's going to be two videos up on the channel tomorrow. The first one's going to be a video revolving around Junior Motorsports in the A-Car for next year. Then later in the evening, we'll have the Cup Series race review for National Super Speedway, pending the weather, of course. And then on Monday, we're going to be starting to talk about Chicago Street Course races, race picks coming out for that. And then we also have a NASCAR news video dropping on the channel as well. And we got a lot of Chicago Street Course previews coming out this week as well. We're getting close to 2,000 subscribers on the channel. We're under 200 subscribers away. So if you enjoyed today's video and you're new, make sure to subscribe. So anyways, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode, and I'll see you guys next time for more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.